And on to a new topic is the issue of what happens if the cooling order for a nuclear plant is unavailable. We call that the loss of the ultimate heat sink. Now, I was on CNN the second week after the accident, and I explained that not only were the diesels flooded, but even if they weren't flooded, the plant would have had a meltdown anyway because the pumps along the ocean had been destroyed by the tsunami. Well, I was also on another show. It was called Five O'Clock Shadow. And we were talking about the issue of the Fort Calhoun plant that had been flooded. And I talked about the fact that an upstream dam failing at Fort Calhoun would have caused the same accident as Fukushima Daiichi. It would have flooded the pumps that are used to cool the plant. That same radio show, I talked about the fact that the Oconee plant down in the south was also subject to that because upstream from it is a huge dam. Well, guess what? Here we are in 2012, and two whistleblowers at the Nuclear Regulatory Commission have come out and said the NRC has known all along what we knew back in 2011. Not only did the whistleblowers tell us that the NRC has a report about the problem, but the whistleblowers are telling us that the NRC is not doing anything about the problem, even though they know about the problem. Well, they wrote a report to the Inspector General, and they asked for the Inspector General to, in, to investigate the Nuclear Regulatory Commission to see why they've been covering up a vital safety issue, loss of the ultimate heat sink, at 23 different nuclear plants around the country. Well, here's the first sentence from their report to the Inspector General. They allege, quote, that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission has intentionally mischaracterized relevant and noteworthy safety information. What they did was they called it security-related. And because it was security-related, that meant that you and I were not um, privy to that information. In fact, it had nothing to do with security. It had to do with protecting the nuclear industry from the expense of having to protect their plants against an upstream dam failure. It doesn't matter where the excess water comes from that floods the cooling pumps. It doesn't have to be a tsunami. It can be the failure of an upstream dam, like at Oconee or like at Fort Calhoun. Or it can be due to the tidal surge that happened after Hurricane Sandy at the Oyster Creek plant. In any event, dozens of nuclear plants in the United States are subject to loss of the ultimate heat sink because their intake structures can become flooded. Now, this is a problem that can be fixed. There are things called submersible pumps, pumps that work underwater. The intake structure pumps could be made submersible so that no matter what Mother Nature throws at them, they can withstand it and continue to cool the nuclear reactor. I think that's an important modification that should be made across the board. I hope that in 2013, the Nuclear Regulatory Commission takes a real serious look at this loss of the ultimate heat sink and suggests that we modify those cooling pumps to make them submersible so that a Fukushima Daiichi accident won't happen here. I think the reason you watch Fairwind's videos is because we provide accurate information and timely information about nuclear problems in the United States, as well as at Fukushima Daiichi and around the world. That kind of analysis costs money. Now, I work for free. I volunteer my time for these videos. Maggie does too. But that doesn't mean we don't have production costs that need to be covered. So it's the end of the year, and I hope that you'll consider giving to Fairwinds as a 501c3. That means we're tax deductible. And you can do a good deed for Fairwinds and at the same time reduce your tax bill if you'll give to Fairwinds before the end of the year. Thank you very much. I'm Arnie Gunderson, and I'll keep you informed.